This fun and thrilling story begins by showing a man named Leo, who is fleeing after stealing something from a Chinese bank. Leo had taken something important that had been kept there for many years. But now, what was bound to happen, happened. Several police officers started chasing him, trying to catch him. Leo, trying to save his life, ran away and hid behind a tree. By this time, many police officers had gathered in the area, determined to catch him red-handed. However, since Leo was hiding in the tree, the police couldn't see him properly. Leo couldn't figure out how to escape the police officers. Just then, he noticed a garden where a scientist was performing some experiments. The scientist's name was Brian, and he was conducting experiments using one of his servants, hoping that his experiment would be successful. Brian had built a car that could run at 50 miles per hour. This was a time when cars had already been invented, but they couldn't go faster than 10 or 20 kilometers per hour. That's why Brian was experimenting to see how fast he could make the car go. Brian had involved his servant in the experiment by putting him inside the car and starting the process. However, the servant realized that this experiment could cost him his life, so he stopped midway, removed all the equipment and threw it away. The servant simply told Brian, My life is too precious to me, so I can't participate in your experiment. You'll have to do it alone. After that, Brian's servant quit his job and left. Now, Leo, still sitting in the tree, started thinking that since the police were already after him, it might be better to help the scientist. That way, he could escape from the police and help the scientist too. Without thinking twice, Leo jumped into the garden and approached Brian, saying, I'll help you with your experiment, but you have to let me stay here. Brian was a bit happy to have someone to assist him in the experiment. Without wasting time, he dressed Leo in all the costumes needed for the testing. He even placed Leo on a car that would keep circling a circular path. Brian had a speedometer with which he would monitor the car's speed. His goal was to push the car to its maximum speed in order to bring about a revolution in the car industry. In no time, Brian started the car, and Leo began to spin around in circles. Soon, Leo started feeling dizzy. Brian, however, was thrilled. But after a while, the car's speed began to increase dramatically, crossing even 50 miles per hour. Before long, the car became completely out of control, and poor Leo was flung from it, crashing into a pole which bent from the impact. Thankfully, Leo was wearing a helmet so he wasn't badly injured. At that moment, Leo realized just how dangerous the experiment could be. When Brian approached him, Leo firmly stated that he would no longer participate in the experiment. Despite this, Brian was ecstatic because his experiment had been successful. He then began pleading with Leo to join him in future experiments, saying he needed Leo's help to perform even bigger experiments. Although Leo was initially hesitant, he noticed that many police officers were still patrolling the area. He figured that if he stayed with Brian, at least he'd have a place to stay. So, Leo made the decision to help Brian with all his experiments. Brian, in return, took Leo to his home with great respect, making it clear that Leo would now assist him in all his upcoming experiments. As they walked, Brian began asking Leo about his background, wanting to know what kind of work he did. But Leo couldn't tell him that he was a thief on the run. So he quickly changed the subject, and Brian led Leo to a room. When the lights in the room turned on, Leo realized that this was where Brian conducted all his experiments. Brian then led Leo to his latest experiment, which he had been working on. It was a flying machine that operated like an airplane. At this point in time, airplanes or any flying devices hadn't been invented yet. So Brian's goal was to create something that could allow humans to fly. Although the experiment was still in progress, Brian was putting in a lot of effort. Leo was quite impressed by the experiment. Next, we are introduced to Lord Kelvin, a prominent figure who was a head member of the Royal Academy of Science. This organization was responsible for scientific work and new inventions worldwide. However, Lord Kelvin was deeply stressed because something valuable had been stolen from their bank. That stolen item was none other than the precious object Leo had taken, an artifact of great significance. In a parallel scene, Leo is shown writing a letter to his father back in their village. From his bag, he pulls out the stolen item, a laughing Buddha statue. 
It was believed that keeping this laughing Buddha brought good fortune and many blessings. This particular statue once belonged to Leo and his fellow villagers, but Lord Kelvin and his people had stolen it and placed it in the bank. Ever since the Laughing Buddha had been taken from their village, the villagers had faced numerous troubles. That was the reason Leo had broken into the bank, to steal back the Laughing Buddha statue for the sake of his village. Now, he was writing a letter to his father, sending the statue back home in the hopes that it would restore peace and prosperity to their land. But the story doesn't end here. We are introduced to a dangerous gangster named Lisa. She was notorious for being ruthless, never hesitating to kill anyone who stood in her way. It turns out that Lisa had originally given the Laughing Buddha statue to Lord Kelvin, instructing him to store it securely in the bank. Whenever Lisa and her gang members needed the statue, they would retrieve it from the bank. But when Lisa found out that the Laughing Buddha statue had been stolen from the bank, she became furious and went to threaten Lord Kelvin. Lisa said, I need that Laughing Buddha statue as soon as possible, and if I don't get it, you'll be killed. She warned that her gang members would completely shut down and destroy him and his academy. Lord Kelvin was extremely stressed because he had no idea where to look for the statue, and he still didn't know that Leo was the thief. However, Lord Kelvin, along with his entire security team and police forces, was actively searching for the statue. Next, we see Brian and Leo at the Royal Academy of Science, where many scientists had gathered to present their brand new experiments. Brian finally showcased his successful car experiment in front of Lord Kelvin and explained everything. But Lord Kelvin and the other scientists laughed at Brian's invention. They couldn't believe anyone could accomplish such a feat, and at that time, nobody saw any need for Brian's experiment. Lord Kelvin remarked that Brian should focus on inventing things that could help people in real life. Brian felt deeply hurt because he had worked extremely hard to make his experiment a success, and it was clear that everyone was mocking his efforts. In response, Brian challenged Lord Kelvin, saying, If speed doesn't matter to you, I will circle the entire world, something that seems impossible right now, and I will do it using my invention, and that too within just 80 days. Lord Kelvin and the scientists burst into laughter once again, dismissing his claim, saying, That's impossible. No one can do that, as our Earth is far too big. The scientists mocked Brian, saying, The Earth is never-ending. How will you cross it? But Brian, determined, replied, I will circle the entire Earth within 80 days with my invention, and I will meet you right here. Seeing Brian's confidence, Lord Kelvin added, if you lose this bet, you will never be able to conduct any experiments again, and you will no longer be considered a scientist. Brian accepted the bet but placed his own condition. If I win, you must resign from your position, and I will become the new head member of the Royal Academy of Science. Lord Kelvin thought for a moment but, convinced that Brian's challenge was impossible, accepted the condition with laughter. Brian immediately went home and started working on all the experiments determined to win the bet. Leo soon joined Brian and told him, We will definitely win this bet. I will fully support you. And together, we will circle the earth and return here. Brian was happy that someone was supporting him, not realizing that Leo had his own hidden agenda. Leo wanted to use Brian to reach his village, making this journey an opportunity for himself. Brian was unaware of Leo's real intentions and continued working with him on the invention. Together, they built a car, and Brian installed an engine capable of speeds over 50 miles per hour. With their gear packed, they set off on their journey to circle the Earth in 80 days. As soon as they hit the road, a police officer stopped them, saying, Your car isn't roadworthy and might be dangerous for others, so you don't have permission to proceed. Unbeknownst to Brian, the officer had been sent by Lord Kelvin, who was feeling insecure about the bet. He feared that if Brian won, he'd have to resign from the academy. To prevent Brian from completing the challenge, Lord Kelvin had bribed the corrupt officer to stop them from continuing their journey. To escape the authorities, Brian and Leo had been continuously traveling and had now reached Paris, with plans to head to Germany the next day. However, Brian informed Leo, we are running way behind schedule. We need to finish this task as soon as possible or else I will lose the bet in under 80 days. Hearing this, 
Leo also felt the urgency, and they quickly resumed their journey. Suddenly, Leo noticed a group of Chinese individuals nearby, wearing different costumes and working on something. These people kept staring at Leo in an odd way, and Leo realized something was wrong. He suspected that these weren't ordinary people but members of a gang, likely after him because of the Buddha statue. Leo, knowing that several gangsters were also after the statue, wanted to avoid them. He quickly took Brian to another location, an art gallery, where many painters were working and selling their artwork. Leo hoped to hide there, thinking the gang wouldn't follow. While inside the gallery, Brian became captivated by the beautiful paintings on display. As he admired the art, he encountered a talented painter whose works were on exhibit. Although there were many paintings, Brian was particularly drawn to one that depicted a man flying in the air with the help of his own wings. This painting resonated deeply with Brian because it reminded him of his own experiment to create a flying machine that could take anyone anywhere. He complimented the lady painter and highly praised her work. However, amidst this peaceful moment, Leo noticed that the gangsters had followed him into the art gallery and were closing in. They began attacking Leo, but luckily, Leo had his own unique talent. He was highly skilled in martial arts. Using his abilities, Leo managed to defend himself and gave the gangsters a tough fight. Unfortunately, in the process, many of the gallery's valuable paintings were ruined beyond repair. For a while, there was chaos in the art gallery, but Leo cleverly defeated all the thugs and began to escape. At that moment, the gallery owner arrived and, upon learning that the lady painter's customer was responsible for everything, became angry with her. He said, I'm firing you. You don't create good paintings, which is why customers are scared off. The lady painter didn't want to work in such an environment anymore. Then she remembered that Brian had mentioned they were heading to Germany, so she decided to join him, wanting to start a new job there. When she told Brian, he welcomed her into his team. Meanwhile, Leo, Brian, and the lady painter were moving forward when the group of Chinese people attacked, trying to capture Leo. The three quickly jumped into a hot air balloon that was nearby, and Leo hung from a rope, fighting them off. The Chinese were determined to catch Leo. Otherwise, their lives would be in danger. However, Leo, Brian, and the lady painter managed to escape in the hot air balloon, narrowly avoiding danger. Brian then asked Leo who those people were that had tried to attack him. Leo fabricated another story, claiming they were villagers who hadn't seen him in a long time and were trying to stop him from leaving. Although Brian believed him, the lady painter began to suspect Leo. She understood that those people were not his friends, but were genuinely trying to harm him. After escaping in the hot air balloon, the three traveled by train. As they continued their journey, Brian felt that the train was moving slower than before, and at this pace, they wouldn't reach their destination in time. He quickly went to the control room to speak to the driver. Once Brian left, the lady painter turned to Leo and said, I know your truth. Those people were not your villagers, and they were trying to harm you. It's also true that you lied to Brian about everything concerning yourself. The lady painter started threatening Leo, saying that if he didn't tell her the whole truth, she would reveal his secrets to Brian. Leo got a little scared and ended up telling her everything. He even showed her the statue of Buddha and explained that he was taking back a heritage item stolen from his empire. But there were many gangsters and powerful people after him wanting to kill him because the statue was worth a lot. Now the lady painter finally understood the whole truth about Leo. Yet, for some reason, she threatened him, saying she could tell Brian everything unless he agreed to one condition. He had to take her with him on his entire journey. She reasoned that he was the first person to truly appreciate her art in such a short time, and that person was none other than Brian. Somewhere along the way, the lady painter had developed feelings for Brian, which is why she wanted to stay with him throughout the trip. Leo agreed to this deal, and it was now settled between them. When Brian arrived shortly after, Leo spoke to him about these matters, suggesting that they should take the lady painter with them on their journey. He believed it would boost their morale and that having more people would help them complete the journey more quickly. Brian thought about it for a while and ultimately agreed. While Leo was on the train, the police officer who worked for Lord Kelvin arrived at that location. He attempted to capture Leo, 
but Leo cleverly dodged his attack and threw the officer out of the train window. Although the officer was seriously injured, it was crucial to save their lives at that moment. After traveling all night, they finally reached Turkey. Upon stepping into Turkey, they were approached by soldiers from a powerful king, who informed them that the king had invited them to a grand feast. However, Brian was reluctant to go. But the soldiers were quite insistent and took all three of them to a very powerful king in Turkey. The palace was enormous, and there was a beautiful statue in the center, surrounded by people singing and dancing. Even the king was playing music. For some reason, the king's face seemed quite familiar. The king approached them and began to introduce himself, asking who they were. Amidst all this, the king became very fond of the lady painter, so he took her and the others to enjoy the feast, keeping them quite happy. The king continuously praised the painter, which made Brian feel jealous since he had also started to like her. Brian simply commented that she looked even more beautiful while painting. The female painter, who still had feelings for Brian, sensed that he too was developing feelings for her. In a fit of anger, the king declared that he would marry the painter. This infuriated Brian, who shouted that this could never happen. However, the entire area belonged to the king, who commanded his soldiers to throw Brian and Leo out. The next day, the king was indeed set to marry the female painter. Brian and Leo felt helpless, but then they came up with an idea. They threatened to destroy one of the king's most prized paintings. The king was extremely frightened and urged his soldiers to stop them, but Brian insisted that they first release the painter before they would save the painting. The king couldn't let anything happen to the statue at any cost, so he sent the female painter to them. Brian and Leo threatened that they would knock the statue down unless everyone left for another room and didn't show themselves. All the soldiers and the king moved to the other room to protect the statue. However, Brian made a mistake. He accidentally broke off the statue's arm, which had become slightly detached. Now, knowing what would happen to them after breaking the statue, the three of them started to run for their lives. Leo used the broken arm to jam the door like a lock, giving them a chance to escape. The three of them quickly set off towards India, but the king was not going to sit quietly after seeing the condition of his precious statue. He ordered his soldiers to capture Leo and Brian. Meanwhile, Lord Kelvin had also learned that the three of them were heading to India, so he came up with an idea to contact the British army station there to capture them. Lord Kelvin immediately contacted the British army and informed them of everything. The British soldiers spread out completely to find Leo and Brian. In a shocking turn of events, it was revealed that the gang members who were after the statue had also attacked Leo. However, Brian and Leo managed to fight off the gang members and left them behind. While evading the British soldiers, they continued onward and eventually reached China. Leo went straight to his village without informing Brian. When the villagers saw Leo, they welcomed him with great honor and joy. After entering, Brian was shocked to see Leo's face in several photographs and couldn't understand how Leo belonged to this unfamiliar place. Leo then revealed the whole truth to Brian about how he had used him for his own benefit to return to his village. He had come to bring back a sacred statue that would ensure peace and prosperity for their village. Brian felt terrible about this, but he was even more upset because the painter was aware of the truth and had hidden it from him. Furious, Brian went outside, but he was soon captured by several gangsters who had arrived. In no time, all the gang members locked Brian, Leo, and the lady painter inside a wooden jail, as they were now to be killed. One of the gangsters approached Leo and demanded the statue, threatening to eliminate all three of them if he didn't comply. Several gang members began to attack Brian, and Leo challenged them, saying that if they had any courage, they should fight him. However, Brian had no experience in fighting. Brian was struggling, and one of the gang members mocked him for fighting against someone weak. This angered the gang member greatly, and they released Leo. Now, Leo bravely faced all of them, but unfortunately, he was not able to win this time because the number of gang members was too high. It seemed that they were going to kill Leo. Suddenly, a group of warriors dressed in costumes entered the scene. They were considered to be among the top 10 ninjas who protected the village and defended it from evil. It turned out that one of those ninjas was none other than Leo himself. 
He was one of the ninjas with excellent knowledge of martial arts. Together, all ten ninjas fought bravely against the gangsters and successfully drove them away. After freeing Brian and the female painter, Brian told them that he now knew the truth and would have to move forward alone to complete his mission. He left, feeling very sad. Although Brian had set off on his journey alone, when he reached London, he was robbed by several people. A woman stole all his belongings, leaving him completely defenseless and without any money for food. In this state, he couldn't travel at all and sat there like a helpless person begging for alms. Brian began to feel that he might never complete his journey. Just then, Leo and the painter entered the scene having found Brian. They apologized to him, and Brian was very happy to see his friends and embraced them. After that, the three of them resumed their journey, now heading towards New York. Meanwhile, we see Lord Kelvin discussing plans with the gangster named Lisa. Lisa was looking at a map and mentioned that if they couldn't get the statue, they could at least take the gold and diamonds hidden beneath the village's soil. Lord Kelvin says that it's definitely possible, but before that, Lisa has to do his job. He tells her that she must stop Brian's journey by any means necessary because if he succeeds in completing his task, Kelvin will have to resign and lose all his powers. So, Lisa and her gang set off to kill Brian. At this time, Brian, Leo, and the painter are in a deserted area, traveling on a train and heading toward New York. They learn that the people of New York are big fans of theirs. News has spread about how Brian and his companions have traveled around the world. By now, they have completed more than half of their journey. Seeing their massive fan following, Brian, Leo, and the painter are very happy. However, suddenly, a police officer arrives and arrests them. Turns out this officer is fake, sent by the gang members. The three are presented before Lisa and her gang. Lisa declares that Brian and Leo must die because they can no longer proceed. The gang surrounds them, but Leo tells Brian and the painter to escape and complete their mission. He insists that it's essential for them to finish their task. Otherwise, they won't be able to make any inventions. He says he can handle these people alone. Before making a tough decision, Brian replies that he doesn't want any inventions for now. They are more important to him, so he will support Leo. Together, Brian, Leo, and the painter team up and start fighting the gangsters. Leo manages to defeat Lisa, causing the gang to scatter. Gradually, the three of them move forward, dealing with the gangsters along the way. Now, they are using a ship to navigate the water route. However, Brian calculates and realizes that the ship is moving at a speed that Brian realizes that they won't reach their position and that time is running out. To make matters worse, the ship's resources start to deplete. After thinking hard, Brian sees some birds and gets an idea. He can build a plane from the resources available on the ship that can fly. He quickly goes to the ship's captain to discuss this. Brian tells the captain that he needs the ship for his invention, and if he succeeds, he will gift him a new ship. Impressed by Brian's confidence, the captain agrees and hands over the ship to him. Using the wood and cloth available on the ship, Brian starts constructing a structure that resembles a plane capable of flying. After continuous hard work, he successfully completes the structure, and they soon start the engine to take off. Brian, Leo, and the painter are inside the plane which is making progress and now reaches London, visible to the people below. However, suddenly, as they ascend, the ropes begin to break, causing the plane to go out of control and crash to the ground in London. At that moment, Lord Kelvin arrives, telling them that they have lost the bet and that their time is up. He instructs the police to arrest the three of them. Shortly after, the police officer who works for Lord Kelvin arrives. Knowing the truth, he reveals to everyone how Kelvin had been sabotaging Brian's journey to win the bet. Finally, everyone learns about Lord Kelvin's deceit, but Kelvin arrogantly scoffs, asking what they can do about it. Just then, the Queen appears, having overheard everything. She understands the situation and punishes Lord Kelvin by imprisoning him. The Queen then honors Brian and his companions, as he has finally made the invention that could greatly benefit humanity. She appoints Brian as the head member of the Royal Academy of Science. The Queen reveals one more shocking detail. 
They have one day left because every time Brian and his companions cleared a country, Lord Kelvin had subtracted an hour from the clock. After fairly calculating everything, it turns out they have one day remaining, meaning Brian, Leo, and the painter have won the bet. They are overjoyed and start celebrating. And that's where our story ends.